Are you looking for the best ways to level up your materia, your character, and heck, even your teammates' materia that you don't really use that much, but you still want to max things out? Well, that is exactly what we have for you here in this video. We are doing the following. Prep time to make sure that you can do this farm as fast as possible and where to get all the materia you need, slash might want to level up, where to go and what chapter you should be in, the fastest way to complete this, what the results will look like, plus we might throw in some extra bonus tips right at the end. All those timestamps below for you if you want to jump ahead. Let's not waste any more time. All right, the first thing that we need to mention is that this is mostly meant as an end game farm, either after you've beaten the game or right as you technically start chapter 13, but can still travel around the areas, which is basically right at the start, which I would actually recommend, by the way, doing some leveling before you go into chapter 13 and the end game, since some of these bosses can be pretty challenging, especially on the harder difficulties. So what exactly is this big farm that we're telling you about here? And what are we going to be progressing? Well, it's all of your materia, basically. More importantly, it can be any level of materia that's basically in the game. Be it simple materia like fire and ice, things like first strike or MP absorption, or even things like the enemy skill materia, which I'll go over in a little bit later in the farm. Obviously, through this entire thing, you're going to get experience for your character leveling up, which is going to unlock more SP for your moves that you can then upgrade at the vending machines that are next to the main benches. Not the chocobo stops, however, though. So let's get you all prepared, then we're gonna get into the actual farm. First thing you'll wanna do is get the first strike materia. When leveled up to level three, which is the max one, you'll get a full AT bar at the beginning of your battle. Now, you might be asking yourself, wait, I don't have this, how do I get this? Simple, go over to where Chadley is anywhere in the world and complete the Grasslands battle intel Horror on the Rain. Simply defeat the enemies there and you'll get the materia. Now all you have to do is simply attach it to Cloud. Note, you do not need this to be attached to any one materia as all the AP we're going to be getting will go towards all the materia attached to your characters. It does not need to be connected by any means. As you can see here on my cloud, I simply attach it to a bracelet, not connected to anything. Next up, you're going to want to do is to get all the materia you want to start leveling up. Like I mentioned beforehand, be it simple ones like fire or blizzard or other materia that take a long time to increase like MP absorption. Those ones can take a long time to get to max level. If you want some of the more powerful material like Comet or the Quake and the Poison combo one or more, then head on over to Chadley and buy those from them. Don't forget these cost data points, however, though. How do you get data points? Well, you need to go out into the open world and complete activities. Be it finding the info towers, combat challenges, or even the Mako Springs and Sanctuaries where you can power up your summons. Don't forget to check out the full playlist on all of our guides when it comes to Final Fantasy VII as we go over both the bosses and how to obtain all of the world summons in Rebirth. Check the pinned comment in the top right corner for those. Once you have all the materia, you're going to want to level up, select Chapter 13, and immediately head over to the Gold Saucer. From there, travel over to the Battle Square on Floor 2, find the Musclehead Coliseum, and select the two-person bout Devil May Cares Desperados. If you can't access this yet, then you need to complete the one beforehand called Zoomies. Don't worry, Zoomies is extremely easy, especially because you're this far in the game already. Anyway, once you can access this challenge, select Cloud and any other character that have the materia that you want to level up. Once you drop into the battle, you can activate Triple Slash, assuming your first strike materia is maxed. If it's not, get a couple attacks in, then activate it. This materia will level up fast with this method too, by the way. Take down the remaining bandits however you want, and boom, that is going to be 5k XP to your characters and 48 AP to the ones who have the materia attached that you are trying to level up. Not too bad in my opinion. Also, key note here with that 5k XP, which may not sound like a lot depending on what games you might potentially play, but if you're in your lower 40s, you're probably leveling up your character every couple of times you do this. Keep in mind, the max level in this game is 70. Doing this method for me from 50 to 70 was a cakewalk, especially because I wasn't even trying to level up my character. Now, after you've completed the first battle, you're gonna enter into the second battle. You can complete this if you want to, but this is only gonna give you 2k XP and nine AP. So to speed this up, just simply hit the start button and give up. Then you can just go ahead and hit retry and get another 5k XP and 48 AP for the materia using the method we just showed you. Keep this up until the material you want is completed, then go ahead and swap it out for some other. Again, this is helpful for those materials with giant numbers to level up. Looking at you, MP absorption. And there we go. That's basically it. Pretty easy method to raise all your material levels. Just remember, this is only for your two party members. Don't forget that by earning not only the AP, but the XP that you gain in this method will level you up and give you more SP to unlock your moves for all your characters that you happen to be using. Now, here's a quick tip for those who might be newer to the game and you haven't been able to beat the game yet. If you want to be raising your levels for all your materia in the early and mid game sections, then go ahead and put all your unused materia onto the characters that you don't use. Then all you have to do is complete battles in the open world, whether it's from the bosses or just enemies that you run into while exploring the world. You might have noticed your other companions are in the background sometimes, even attacking the enemies the main party is facing. When you finish the battle, you'll get XP and AP. 
If you hit start and go to your materia, you're going to see that the other party members will have their materia progress increase by however much you earned during that battle. So if you're in the early sections of the game still, don't just forget about some of that materia that you might want to use later on. Throw it all onto the party members you don't really use, and they'll start to level it up slowly but surely. All right, before we go ahead and end the video, here are a few quick extra tips that we kind of just picked up as we got to play through the game. I mean, I'm already 70 plus hours into this thing. Tip number one, if you want to get into the air quickly with Cloud, dodge, then immediately hold down the attack button and you'll lunge into the air towards the opponent you are targeting. This works not only for air combos, but if you hit the dodge button while in air, as long as you don't get hit, you can continue to stay in the air as long as you possibly can. Plus, there are a few abilities that you can use only in the air. When you complete the game and unlock chapter select, go into the system and then go into your extra settings. There's a setting called material auto collect that's turned off. Turn that on. This is going to save you from having to press triangle all the time when collecting more materials when you're trying to complete the game if you continue to do some of the side quests. If you've ever played a PC game or a console game from this generation, then you might have heard the terms field of depth or field of view. Basically, it's how much you can see on screen at once. Some games, it's how zoomed in on the main character you might be or how far the sides are stretched out. Well, in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you can go into the options, go to camera, then change it from one to either two or three, both in battle and out of battle, depending on your personal preference. Now, one is not a bad setting by any means. In fact, I completed the entire game on this setting, but once you select two or three, there's really no going back, at least in my personal opinion. It's like setting your FOV to 105 on PC and realizing how much you can actually see on screen. One of the best materia is called the enemy material, where you basically get a set of moves as you complete challenges at Chadley. All these abilities you'll be able to use as much as you want as long as you have this materia attached to you. Not to mention also gives you a good HP, MP, and attack bonuses combined with it. One of my personal favorite abilities is the discharge ability because every time you fill up your AT bar, boom, electricity is going to surround you and it can even hurt opponents that are weak to electricity, which is very nice if you don't have thunder attached. Everyone knows that you can block with R1 in the game. However, did you know that if you time it just right, you can do a perfect block, taking no damage at all? It's actually very helpful in later parts of the game because you'll take no damage and you can counterattack as much as you want. Just keep in mind, however, though, this does not work for unblockable moves. So gotta dodge those. Final last minute tip that we have to mention that we mentioned in basically all of our other guide videos is that when you're fighting enemies and as long as you've scanned them, don't forget to hit the touchpad and you can see all the data that has been scanned beforehand. Just remember, you need to use Assess for the very first time on said opponent. After that, you don't need to waste an AT bar at all. This is a very helpful way of making combat go your way and also building the characters the way you want to. We could go over so many more little tips and tricks, but we're going to end it here. But now we want to know from you down in the comments below, what is your best tip when it comes to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth that you've either seen or discovered yourself? Let us know down below so we can spread all that information to all the players. If you enjoyed the video, then leave us a like as it shows us that you enjoy this type of content. And don't forget to sub to the channel if you want to see more of it. Finally, don't forget to check out our full Final Fantasy VII Rebirth playlist as it has guides on bosses and how to obtain all the summons in the game. I've been Talon with Direct Gaming. Hope you have a great day and week. Thank you so much for joining us in the video, and I can't wait to see you all in the next one. Johnny.